Welcome to Spooky Pasta, the place where nightmares come to life. Today's story is not something I'd usually cover, but I came across this a couple of days ago while looking for a creepy pasta to post for all of your entertainment, but this one really caught my attention. So here's an allegedly true dogman encounter and its aftermath. My full dogman encounter by Nameless Drifter One. Hi all. So, I know in the past I said on here that I mentioned an encounter with what I think may have been a dogman, yet haven't posted the full story. It's taken me a while to find the time, and it's taken a long time for the trauma to settle so that this period in my life could be looked at from a more objective viewpoint. I've never really revealed anything this personal to the general public before, and I anticipate this post may get a bit more attention as well, so it's a bit nerve-wracking for me. But after keeping it secret for years, I think it's about time this becomes known. Before anyone gets so invested in this post, I should note that I did not actually see that much of the dogman. I put that in quotes because I am still not 100% sure if that is what it was, but I still find it the most plausible. This is more about the experience and how it and the creature has affected my life. So... Here it is. This experience took place when I was 10 years old. At the time, I only had my mother taking care of me, no father around. We lived in with my great-grandmother in Pennsylvania for the majority of my childhood. My mom had made friends with a woman who owned a large lakefront property near Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. She made an offer to let us live in a small cabin on the property she owned in exchange for work at her art shop. So, we ended up flying up in approximately 2007. One thing that helps me remember the year is that the next year after we came back, Obama was elected president. Now, this property was located in a relatively isolated area. There were other inhabitants in the general area, but from the main road you would have to turn onto this gravel road that led into this heavily wooded area, drive for a minute or two and then you would be on the property. On this property was a small, deep pond, a shed, the woman's house, which was decent, not too upscale but better than our cabin. And behind the house was a cliff that overlooked a shoreline of Lake Michigan. Once you get into the property, you are surrounded by woods. In hindsight, it sounds like I'm describing a horror movie setting, so when we first arrived there, I believe it was mid or late summer, possibly early fall. One weird detail was the presence of this large, red, dead fish that was just laying on the ground. I found it in between the small deep pond and the shed. It was so out of place. It was a big fish and couldn't have come from that little pond. I have tried to Google what types of large, red fish live in Lake Michigan, but nothing I found looks like the fish I saw. The closest thing I could compare it to was a red snapper. Now that I look it up, it looks a lot like it. Part of my mind is trying to rationalize this as maybe someone from the woman's household bought it, didn't like it, and threw it out. But why? Anyway, that was just the first of many odd things that occurred. I honestly can't remember too many other normal life details of my time spent spin in Wisconsin since we were barely there a year. But when winter came, that's when I remember things started to get a little strange. In the snow around the shed, there were these odd, huge footprints. Thing is, I remember them being round and sort of compared their roundness to an elephant's foot, but I don't think they were that round. Just rounder than any normal snow footprint I've seen. My mother chalked them up to bare footprints, since that was the only rational explanation we could come up with but I don't remember them being shaped like a bear's. There were also some other strange snow prints. One of them looked like someone put on a pair of snow skis and walked through the snow a little. Strange thing about them is, after a while they just stopped. My mother was weirded out about these ones. It was like whatever was walking there flew away or disappeared or something. I've considered that someone around there may have been walking in snow skis, but this was a fairly level dense forest. My mom said she heard something on the radio about a wallaby escaping from captivity or something, so we just kind of sort of assumed it may have been that. 
We made a cute little song about bears and wallabies playing on the range or something. Now for the shitty part. Fast forward a couple months, it was in the middle of winter, and it was absolutely freezing cold outside. We're talking sub-zero temperatures. I think because we were so close to the lake, it was worse. This encounter happened late at night. Our cottage had one floor and a loft where I slept. I can't remember every detail of what exactly happened, but everything seemed normal until I was woken up by my mother panicking in the middle of the night. She ordered me to stay up in the loft and not come down. I was so confused and scared because I had never seen her act like this and she wouldn't tell me what was going on. She had me bring up the ladder so in case something got in it would have a harder time reaching me. So for about what felt like an hour I stayed in the loft, watching my mom as she was looking at the window with a knife in one hand and a phone on the other, scared shitless until the police arrived. When they got there, she told them she heard banging on the side of our cottage, which didn't make sense to me at the time because I didn't hear anything like that. We left the place that night and found a motel which was just about to close until we came. I remember what that room looked like. That was without a doubt the most traumatic night in my life. I thought we were gonna die because something was after us, and I'm pretty sure my mom did too. We had just moved to this cottage in Wisconsin, and it we weren't even there for a full year. The incident was so terrifying that my mom immediately booked a flight back to Pennsylvania, where we originally lived, but our flight was delayed. I remember doing what kids do, be impatient and move around a lot in the airport. I had stepped on a metal part of this flat escalator, which left dirt marks. This janitor guy got mad at me, and so did my mother, and I went back to feeling like shit. While we were sitting in the waiting area, there was this rude family with a girl who was making fun of me for some reason, pointing and laughing at me a little bit. We were unfortunately seated next to each other on the flight and for some reason, she started picking off her hair and placing them on my mom. It was an awkward flight with a lot of tension which made it even worse. I also remember cussing at them on the way out of the airport. It was out of character for me to do but goddamn was I out of it. Since we were and still are, very poor. We have lived with my great-grandmother for most of my childhood, never truly owning a home or property. So when we left Wisconsin, we had to come back. Things seemed to be normal for a while, and it had been a couple months after this incident. Then for some unknown reason, my mother began behaving extremely neurotic, which I had no clue why. It really fucking stressed me out when she would do this, I can't exactly remember what she was doing, but it was enough to stress a young child out. One day, she slept for longer than usual, and when she woke up, she thought she had urinated blood as her urine was a darkish color. She kept saying that she had missing time, like she had experienced an unusual amount of missing time or something. This insanity went on for about a week or so now. For my encounter on one of those nights, we were in the kitchen, my mom was making something to eat and I was sitting at the dinner table staring outside the kitchen window. The house we lived in sat on a large incline that overlooked the town area, and I was looking at the lights from the city. Right outside of the house near this window was a large oak tree that was close to our house, with its branches being above the window about 10 to 30 feet away. It was dark, so you couldn't see anything else but the distant lights. So as I was sitting there, staring at the town lights, something red appeared in the peripheral corner of my eye. I had thought it was another city light. So my vision slowly wandered over until I was looking directly at one singular, glowing eye. Sort of reptilian in shape. From my memory, it's not exactly like how Mothman is usually described. I sort of remember a slit pupil like a lizard. Sort of like this image but more luminous. I don't remember seeing another red eye, but it may have been obstructed by leaves or branches. I sat there kind of daydreaming a bit, not totally comprehending what I was seeing. Then it blinked. It fucking blinked. I remember backing away from the table saying, oh no, please no, and telling my mom there was something outside of the window. 
She looked and saw it, but didn't immediately panic like I did. Honestly, this night might have been worse than the first. No, actually, I think it was because I saw it. We went up into the bedroom and were just kind of sitting there, clueless on what to do. My mom resorted back to her manic behavior and basically stayed praying over me until I fell asleep. She was still doing it when I woke up. Then we got into my mom's van and left. What happened next was super fucking stressful, to the point where I just wanted to die. For the next day or two, my mother would drive us around aimlessly in her van. She didn't have any direction or destination. She just drove crazed out of her mind. We would occasionally stop back at our grandmother's house in the daytime, but we wouldn't stay there at night. At some point, a mattress was brought into the back of her van for me to sleep on. I think we stayed in a lighted parking lot the night when I fell asleep. When I woke up, she was still driving around. I fucking hated and pleaded and begged for her to let us just go back home, even though I was also scared about returning. After much coercion and persuasion, I eventually talked her into going back to our grandmother's house so I could sleep in a comfortable bed. I was still just a kid and was really fucking tired of this bullshit. She was so paranoid and panicked that when we came back, she didn't let me eat the food she had previously made, even though it was perfectly fine. I was hungry, and to this day I hate letting any food go to waste. I had a collection of stuffed animals that meant a lot to me. As memorabilia, she put them all in a black trash bag. I found them, but she still wouldn't let me have them. I think she burned them, because she was burning a bunch of other stuff, because of her out-of-control manic mental state. God, I fucking hated that she did that. This hurt me a lot. I love those things. She ended up putting multiple cross statues and Jesus pictures across the house as well as outside, on the porch, on the oak tree. Even put some cross symbols on doors around the house. You know, this is actually kind of painful to remember now, even though it's so far back and removed. Like, mentally painful. One other odd thing that happened though, while she was burning things, my grandmother gave my mom this old Bible-looking book for some reason. This just wasn't any old Bible either. It had a hard leather covering with some sort of carving on the cover. This Bible was in a language I did not know, but used the English alphabet characters. It had old-looking black and white images that looked medieval in style, though I can't remember what they depicted. Probably some disturbing medieval art. My mom burned it. For the longest time, I was perplexed about what this book was, what it meant to my grandma. Was it truly a cursed and evil item that needed to be destroyed? I spent some time searching for clues and found what looks almost exactly like the Bible my mom burned. Here it is. I can't remember if this was exactly what this Bible looked like, but it's pretty damn close. Does anyone here know anything about this Bible? I also read that it might be Lutheran. Eventually, we found a place to stay with one of my mom's friends in her basement, stayed there for a week or two, and then eventually a shelter for abused women. It did work out though since we received some help after that and found a place in Ohio where we could live. This incident became a thing we were able to eventually leave in the past and get over, but occasionally we do bring it up and talk about it since. At first, it was hard because she would not talk about it at all, but later on we were able to discuss it, and I got her to tell me what she saw outside our cabin in Wisconsin. Said what she saw were two red lights about 50 to 100 feet away from our cottage. She showed me how it was moving, whatever it was, not erratically, but keeping its distance. Behind our cottage was this heavily forested area. This thing was about 50 to 100 feet away from our cottage in this forested area. Mom physically showed how it is sort of getting closer to the cottage, though it was still a considerable distance away. The two red lights never got close, or at least close enough for her to describe any features other than those two red lights. She would not let me come down from the loft to check out why she was panicking and what was happening. She had called the police and said that she had heard banging on the side of our cottage, 
because she knew that was more believable than if she were to describe what she was seeing. She had a knife the whole time before the cops came. As soon as the cop car arrived, she said whatever this thing was, looked over at the police lights coming through, turned around and took off running near a dilapidated barn that was located near where this thing was, further back into the forest. I never had a glimpse at this thing in Wisconsin. At first, she chalked it up to somebody with red goggles stalking us, or maybe playing a prank. She was surprisingly skeptical about it being something like a cryptid. However, this argument doesn't really hold up because during our first encounter in Wisconsin, it was late at night during winter. It was extremely cold up where we lived, and especially since we lived right next to a great lake. I don't think anybody would have been out there to play a prank like that, or try and spy on us through a small window in our cottage. Now, this is where a strange little discrepancy pops up. Sometime after the first encounter of this thing in Wisconsin, we again had an encounter with a red glowing eyed being right outside of our grandmother's house, which we had lived for many years secure and without paranormal incident. This to me suggests that this may have been the same entity in both encounters. So how did it travel such a distance? Why did it travel across many hundreds of miles just to harass us? It has no logic. Such a feat makes me believe that whatever we encountered was not a normal physical being. Bound by laws of physicality and traversing such distances really would not be a problem for it. There's also the subject of what this really was. For many years, the only explanation that I could come up with is that it was an actual, real demon. Since this incident, it has popped up into my mind occasionally. Sometimes I would just happen to click myself into the paranormal side of YouTube, where they talk about cryptids and supernatural happenings and phenomena. This piqued my curiosity and I began doing some online research, comparing other people's encounters and descriptions of various kinds to my own. I have since read, heard, and listened to other people's encounters with being that also have glowing red eyes. This actually appears to be a common phenomena that comes up in such encounters. There are a few Bigfoot sightings which some are reported to have red eyes. Both the Mothman and the Flatwoods Monster were described with red glowing eyes. I have read of one or two alien encounters where they had red eyes. And apparently, dogmen are often reported as having glowing red eyes as well, though not all. This is definitely a supernatural phenomenon, and one that inspires fear. I would go back and forth in my mind, trying to figure out which cryptid this could have been. I did not see the whole body, thank God. If I saw a fucking giant werewolf-looking thing with murder eyes in a tree outside, my soul would have jumped out of my body. I have heard many other people on the DME podcast describe them with red eyes, and there was one episode in particular that reminded me of my own encounter. Only the guy could see the full body. He said it was also in a tree. Then there was the location. I think where I lived was not too far off from Bray Road where the infamous beast of Bray Road was reported. That one had red eyes. I honestly don't have too much else to compare, but if anything would be living out in that forest, walking around in Antarctic winds and deep snow without a problem, it would probably be one of these beasts. I apologize that this post was so long and probably includes some unnecessary details. I originally just wanted to post my encounters with this thing that harassed us. It's just that I have never told anybody about this entire ordeal, this chapter of my life, mostly bound by paranoia coming from my mom. It almost feels kind of good to get off my chest, cathartic to type this out. To this day, that shit still sticks with me. Also, sorry if this post seems a bit unorganized and chaotic. I stayed up over an hour typing this out and haven't proofread it because I am tired and am about to go to sleep. I'm pretty nervous about how this is going to be received. I'll try and answer any questions if I'm able to and clear up anything that I might be misunderstood. Please understand that this is my first time really putting myself out here with this information. 
I know my mother said for me to always keep this whole ordeal a secret, but I could not not talk about it any longer. So, in these recent years, my research has led me down a rabbit hole into fringe topics and strange subjects regarding the paranormal and the true nature of reality. After many years of reading, watching, listening, and research, I think I may have a theory about what dogmen actually are. But a lot of it has to do with, not sure how I should say this, but understanding what dogmen are requires a greater understanding about the true nature of reality itself. One needs an open mind for this. I say this because initially I disregarded this whole subject area as crazy schizophrenic bullshit, ironically unaware of how my own experiences could be labeled the same. Even though these were objective experiences, I admit I don't have the whole picture, far from it, but slowly I am putting the pieces together. I'm actually glad I took so long to make this post, as a year or two ago I did not have the current knowledge or state of mind that I currently have. I think I might make a separate post about my theory of what I think dogmen actually are, and how they're part of a greater aspect of our reality and existence which is poorly understood. I hope one day I might be able to understand what dogmen are, and also help others in doing so.